Whatever be Macron's intentions, you've got to appreciate his effort for keeping the window of diplomacy open, for sending out the positive signals. But are his efforts yielding any dividends? Also, what about the other stakeholders in this conflict? Where are they taking the narrative? Do they expect the talks to deliver? To discuss all of this and more, I'm joined by our correspondents from three capitals across the world. Julia Chapman with us from Moscow, Simon Marks from Washington, D.C., and Ollie Barrett from London. Hello to all of you from Kiev. Julia, let's start with you. Emmanuel Macron held a five-hour-long marathon meeting with Vladimir Putin. How does Russia see this meeting? Has Macron been able to shift the situation in favor of diplomacy? After the five hours plus of dialogue that was held between President Macron and President Vladimir Putin, they finally came out and gave a press conference which was very short on detail. President Putin said that Emmanuel Macron raised some ideas that could form the basis of future negotiations. And he did say that Russia was trying to find some sort of compromise that would suit everybody. But there was no deal that had been heralded by the French side ahead of these talks. That said, uh, according to the Financial Times newspaper, some French officials are briefing that there was uh, a, a, at least steps towards an agreement on military de-escalation, something that President Macron said he wouldn't leave Moscow without. Uh, they mentioned promises not to stage any kind of uh, military action. Uh, certainly that hasn't been confirmed by the Kremlin, which says that all the subjects discussed at yesterday's meetings will have to be uh, gone fed back to Russia, France's other allies in the European Union, the United States, that it isn't for France to unilaterally make agreements with the Kremlin. But there did seem to be some sort of positive language emerging from these talks. Simon, Joe Biden says that it would be wise for American citizens to leave Ukraine at the earliest. Tell us about the threat perception in Washington, D.C. Also, did the meeting with Olaf Scholz yield any dividends, uh, given how they were clearly at odds over the future of Nord Stream 2. Well, the president really was repeating what the State Department has already advised American citizens in Ukraine to do, and that is to evacuate the country uh, using commercially available methods of transport as quickly as possible. That warning uh, was first issued about 10 days ago, but hearing it articulated by President Biden himself for the first time uh, certainly sends a fresh message not just to uh, American citizens in uh, Ukraine itself but also to the wider world that he remains absolutely focused on the possibility uh, of the crisis being inflamed by a Russian invasion. As to the wider discussions that took place here yesterday uh, between President Biden and Olaf Scholz, I mean they claimed that they are absolutely aligned and marching shoulder to shoulder uh, in regard to Ukraine and uh, vowed that they would back uh, sanctions jointly against Ukraine that the United States uh, continues to say will be swift and severe uh, if a Russian invasion occurs. But it was absolutely evident at their joint press conference that there is still a tremendous gulf between them over the issue of Nord Stream 2, that gas pipeline that's going to bring natural gas from Russia uh, to Germany and on to the rest of Europe. Uh, President Biden darkly hinting that the United States has some kind of a plan. American officials won't uh, detail it. Uh, to make sure that Nord Stream 2 is never able to function, to stop the project in its tracks. Uh, that came from President Biden yesterday, but Chancellor Schultz uh, was the German leader at the meeting who wouldn't even allow the phrase Nord Stream 2 uh, to fall from his lips. Ollie, tell us about the developments in London. The Prime Minister of uh, Britain has said that he will not, quote-unquote, finch over Ukraine. But what's he up to? Is Britain sending more troops? Boris Johnson certainly wants to send that message. He says Britain won't flinch uh, in the face of moves by Russia. And he also wants to show to Ukraine that London very much stands behind Kiev. Of course, Boris Johnson himself was in Kiev uh, earlier this week. We also know that Liz Truss, the Foreign Secretary, and Ben Wallace, the UK Defence Secretary, are due to travel to Moscow within days to meet their counterparts in Moscow. Uh, Boris Johnson uh, continues to reiterate his support for the Ukrainians, for the NATO military alliance and has been considering a number of moves that relate to the movement of troops and military hardware uh, around Eastern Europe to send that message 
to Moscow that Britain uh, is not going to, as I say, flinch, which is the word that Boris Johnson has been using himself. Uh, the UK also feels it's been showing a great deal of support in practical terms to Ukraine already. It's been sending defensive missiles to Ukraine. It's been training troops there for a number of years now. Julia Chapman, Simon Marks, Oli Barrett, thanks very much for those updates.